Hi, this is Lorena, and I just wanted to do kind of like a review of some of my favorite products, but I also kind of want to incorporate uh, an experience that I've been experiencing. Well, I've been working um, on my long arm for two thousand since 2008, but I honestly don't think I really started touching my machine for reels till about 2012, I think. Um, I was going to college, and so kind of long arm quilting kind of took the back seat. I'm more of a, an embroiderer. I do a lot more embroidery work for clients, and I do now do a lot more work for long arm clients, but at the time, I was more of an embroiderer. So anyhow, I went to college, and I'm pretty much alone a lot of the time, so so you know where I'm coming from. I'm a house mom. I don't. I work for my house, so I'm alone in my house a lot. And um, so a while back, someone told me to go back to 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 start going to a long arm group or a group of some kind, like sewing groups and stuff like that. And I kind of like had a really nag. Um, I'm not going. I'm not interested in that. Um, I think sometimes I think that um, some groups have a lot of politics in them. Well, anyway, a friend went to one years ago and she said that she wasn't received really well. And that kind of discouraged me because I don't want to participate in stuff like that, I guess. So anyway, a friend went just recently and she invited me to go to this one. So I just want to share with you that there's a social construct called reciprocation. So... The kind of energy you bring to a group setting is the kind of energy you receive back. So since I've been going to school, I want to use the sociology term, even though I'm not using my degree or doing anything with it. Um, one of the terms is called reciprocation. So if you're a very shy and quiet person and you don't talk to people, then you will re receive reciprocations. You will receive the energy that you're, gi that you're giving off. So a lot of times that if you're not talking to people, people are not going to talk to you because they're going to feel that you don't want to be talked to. It's not necessarily that they don't want to talk to you. It's just that they just don't think you want to talk to them. And so we're all really weird social animals. But if you go out there and you introduce yourself and you talk to everybody and you shake everybody's hand and you make yourself available to everybody, then all of a sudden everybody will start socially connecting with you because you re you were open, so they become open. Uh, reciprocation is also connected to if I share with you a deep emotional story of myself, you will more likely show a deep emotional story about yourself. Or if I share my, uh, if I'm very shallow in my sharing with you, meaning I'm very cold with how I share myself with you, you yourself will be very cold with me. So, and that's the construct of reciprocation, a social, uh, a social definition. So that's what that is. So I just wanted to share with you. So my friend went to this long arm group and she was not really well received, but I also think that my friend is pretty much a shy little bunny. Um, she's real shy. Um, I think she's just a very quiet person and in social settings she has a hard time opening up because she just doesn't know people initially and it takes her a while to warm up. She's like one of those fish in a bag. You know, you have to sit her in the, in the fish tank to get acclimated to the environment. So I call her a fish in the bag sometimes. So I'm the kind of person that um, I want to get to know anybody because I'm alone a lot and I want to make the most of my time when I went. So the second time her and I, she went, I it was my first time, I literally talked to everybody. I wanted to get to know everyone. And so the reception, because she was with me, they started talking to her more openly because I guess maybe I was kind of reciprocating a different energy. I was bringing to the table a different energy. And so she was really loved and accepted. To her, she was being rejected, but in truth, I think the group didn't know what to do with her because of how she brought energy to the space. So anyway, your energy matters. And so if you have a very positive energy, you're probably gonna get positive energy back. If you're gonna be a very shy person and quiet and internalized, you're probably gonna get a group of people that are being quiet and internal with you. So anyway, your energy matters. The reason I'm sharing this is I started going with this group and talking to them and I've learned so much in just a short amount of time of going with this group. So I want to share with you that if you are a long armor or if you are a quilter or a piecer, try if you can to connect yourself with other people that know your skill. 
um, even if the group is snooty, even if they they have a negative group sense or oh it's they're rude they're cliquish they're 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 they don't accept new people the truth is is this is the kind of wording i heard about this group but the truth is is i brought a different energy and they really weren't snooty as a matter of fact they were probably just cautious they probably just didn't want to offend or they didn't want to do something or say something to somebody who was closed off that may hurt them feelings so they just got quiet and left them alone and so your energy matters. So I started going to this group. I met a maintenance guy for the long arm quilting. I met a distributor for Gamel for my machine, but she also distributes threads. So her name is Gina, and I want to share something that I got from talking to her. So Gina is a distributor for Gamel, but she also became a distributor for a thread company. And this is some things that you could benefit in going into some type of group setting. So Gina uh, sells thread, right? And she uh, sells thread, it's called, um, what is this thread called? Promise you I knew what it was called a minute ago. It's called Iris Thread and it's a polyester thread. Now this is for long arm, you can use it for long arm and you can use it for embroidery. And since I'm an embroiderer, I get, uh, uh, I get it to use it for both and I want to try it out. What I love about um, this group or getting to know this group or even going and I wish I would have gone years ago it's uh, she gave me one thread for free and it's not about getting the thread for free but this thread I bought a whole bunch of threads for her it was only eight bucks. I can't beat this I mean usually a spool of thread like this is twenty four dollars for embroidery thread or for long arm quilting thread, it's pretty expensive. So I'm gonna try this uh, iris thread out, but really you can't even beat it for the cost of it. She is also a thread distributor for Omni Thread, and you're not gonna believe how much I paid for this thread. I only paid $9. So I would have never uh, received some of this wonderful thread I would have had to order, and maybe I could have found it, but I would have had to order it and paid shipping and, um, and I would have had to look for it and here because I went to this long arm quilt group you know you get to know people who distribute different types of products there's also a woman in my quilt group that she sells uh, hand dyed fabric oh my god so anyway that's one of the benefits of going to these groups also what happened is some of the ladies like had thread that they had in storage for a period of time that they weren't using so they brought it and they were selling it really on the cheap down low cheap another thing um, there was a woodworker he ended up making these little um wood screws he's going to make me um he's going to make me a tool for my hand applique and i'll show it next time but he's doing this beautiful woodwork and it's cheap i mean i'm not saying cheap cheap but it's like what ten dollars for his handcraft also, I met this young man, uh, this man, Paul. He does maintenance for long arm quilting machines, all long arm quilting machines. I had him come and look at my machine, and I've also, and um, he solved the problem that I had for months for me. So here I have my long arm table. Uh, this is for my gamble, it's a table. And I don't know, I've talked about it before that when I'm my long arm, I go forward and back, it gets caught. Well, he said it was a rubber seal, and so he took the rubber seal and duct taped it for me. It did fix the situation some. It did fix it. He really did show me that the, that the things I was working on my machine, how I was up keeping it, was right. I was right on point, which is all encouraging. Uh, I did have to pay him to come, but let me share this. I bought this um, in 2000. 15 in May, I think. It's called a Ruler Mate at uh, www.lovetoquilt.com, and that's the company. These are tables for all types of long arm quilting machines. I think they distribute for all machines. Well, since my machine was having that issue where it was getting caught, and I'm trying to do line work. Um, I was getting really frustrated that here I'm trying to do perfect line work and then it, the machine would get caught and I would have like a jagged edge and it would just get frustrating. So I got this and I loved it. I spent $250 for it. Yeah, it was a little bit pricey. It was a big decision for me to pay for something this much. But what happened is it worked. It did go. I was thinking that I wasn't tightening, tightening these enough. 
um, and it was sliding off. And so I was really frustrated. Like, I'm going to go and I'm going to have a tantrum with these people because it's not working and I paid a lot of money. Well, Paul came. And I didn't know that, you know, where my machine hooks right here, it's a little thinner. And all I needed to do is add um, more, I don't know if you see right there, there's some cork right there. They had a really thin layer of cork, and then you lock it into this. And so I had to get thicker cork. Well, the, he really saved me a lot of time. I went to Hobby Lobby, and I know this is overkill. I went and bought a whole bunch of cork because I just wanted to make sure that I didn't have to go back and forth. And this is has some sticky. And I cut myself the measurement of the cork I needed, and I put two layers. I kind of thickened it. Maybe you see it right there. I did two layers of cork. Initially, I was on the fence on this product, and once I put it on the machine, it locked in. It was solid as a rock. Solid. This is old school. Solid as a rock. And so it was solid as a rock. And so I think this was such a blessing. Um, it doesn't move and I don't have the issues with it locking or dragging or causing hesitations on my machine so this is one of my best purchases in 2015 and I really do thank Paul for showing me that all I needed to do is thicken up the cork like I did right there I did two layers instead of the one now uh, ruler made mate this company their instructions were kind of thin they were really light all they did is talk about how to tighten this um but having paul who i met at the long arm quilting group come to my house and do maintenance on my machine and he looked at the little kind of i the little things i asked him to look at he really did fix this for me and i really am crazy about this now another thing is i went to the houston quilt show and i loved it but I met some of the ladies that I saw in the long arm group and they told me to go get me some rollers. And they told me to go get me some rollers. And they were like shouting out about these rollers, that they were the best rollers ever. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I really am kind of like, <laughs> they're a lot of money to buy rollers. So I went to Quilters Apothecary and they told me to go get these rollers. And that they are great rollers. And so they give counsel, going to a group will give you counsel about things that you did not expect or buying thread that you didn't think you could get so cheap or having somebody work on your stuff and fix it for you before you start yelling at the people who made the part. Um, and so I went and got these quilter pocket theories. I think any roller that has a 45 degree angle like this, I think um, Green Fairy, uh, there's a quilting called Quint Quilting Green Fairy or something like that. She has a yellow one. She does a lot of modern quilts. I don't even remember her name right now. Um, so she's like an awesome quilter. But I went and bought some of these because the ladies at the quilt group who were at the Houston show who saw me and greeted me and said, you gotta go. And I bought two of these. And I bought two of these. And one of the ladies showed me the fabric she bought. She brought some satin sateen. Oh my God. That fabric was gorgeous. I think I'm just going to sniff it and look at it and pull it out and rub it and not do nothing with it. But I bought myself two panels and one panel cost me 30 bucks. And I went and got that fabric because one of the ladies at the quilt group told me to go and get me some rollers from, I think his, um, from this guy. He's a YouTuber also too, uh, from Quilters Apothecary. So... Now, I think any roller that has the angle would work just great, but with this roller and this table that doesn't shift on me or cause any drag or problems, I think I'm going to have greater success, and I'm not going to have to worry about some of the issues that I've been worrying about. So I think this is one of my favorite purchases, really. Um, I can't believe how your hand say, sits and how you turn. Um, I'm excited to use this. I tried them out the other day, and I was all excited. And I love this now that it does not fall off my machine or kind of pop, play, pop, pl, uh, peel off the way it was. And I thank Paul for helping me fix that. I mean, he was um, him, him coming to my house and just fixing the little things that I had issues with. And just this right here was a shout out to him and taking care of me there. So 
another thing that I wanted to share about the quilt group, it's, um, there's a sense of camaraderie that you go and we're doing a challenge. Uh, we're doing, I think a wonky house challenge. Any way you want to do it. Um, and then at the end of the year, you're going to bring that challenge to the table. So I'm all excited because I'm going to do some long arm quilting and I'm going to do some really fabulous work. And I'm really excited now about long arm quilting because of the community. They share all their quilts. So you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how beautiful that work. And you want to also come up to that level. Now, there's some neat things about the groups because you have baby, baby uh, long armors. And then you have some really seasoned long armors who have been doing it for the last 20 years. And they are wonderful, talented women that have really matured in their skill. And there's advice that they have for you that you couldn't get anywhere else. Or I wish I would have gotten when I was a baby quilter because um, I spent a lot of time um, messing up by myself. And if I would have had someone there to help me and encourage me or challenge me or, or give me wisdom, I think um, I probably would have used my machine more and I probably would have invested in my trade a lot more because I had that support. So that that's a shout out to long arm groups. Okay, so I want to talk about other products that I'm deadly in love with. Another product that I'm in love with is batting, batting seam tape. I love this stuff. I'm sure you who quilt your piece and so this is to all of us you who quilt your piece um have tons of batting i'm sure you have small pieces i'm so sure you have medium to medium pieces or bigger pieces a while back a friend of mine she told me that the way she um, does her connecting her batting is she would do zigzag edges I, okay, so this is one of the things I did. <clears throat> this is my friend who pins her, 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 her leaders. I love her. I don't have time to zigzag all my batting together. I have a life. I'm sure she does too. I don't know. I just can't see my, okay, so I zigzagged this little piece. Um. I was just not into that kind of crap. I'm sorry. So I went and I found this and all you do is you make sure you have a clean edge and you connect your other clean edge and you put it on top and you iron it. Yeah, you just iron it. It takes less than two seconds um, to do that. So what I do is when I cut off all the batting, I make sure that I trim it straight and I make myself long strips and I strip it and I promise you, it, no one will know that you're using scrap batting um, because you can't really see this. Let me take it out. You can't really see it at all. It's real thin, it's translucent, and so it starts to look like the batting and it's a little, there's like glue in here. So I think this is one of the great purchases. I think it's $10 at a quilt store. Um, I haven't been able to find this at Joann's or anywhere else, but I love it. I love it. Um, this is one of my favorite things. I do a lot of piece batting for quilts that I'm donating. They don't even know. They don't know that I used scrap batting um, because you can't see it. I promise. Well, I can't promise because we each have different results. But this is the quickest, easiest way. And no way am I going to sit in front of my sewing machine and surge or do a zigzag stitch on batting because I would rather be piecing a block if I'm gonna be sitting in front of my sewing machine. And so this, I do this um, when I already have the back fabric and I have my strips together and I just lay it straight, put the two ends, iron it, get another piece and I keep doing that until I have enough for the length of the, of the quilt top that I'm doing. So that's how I do that. Favorite, favorite, um, stuff. Another thing that I love, and I know I talked about this before, this wonderful little tiny seam ripper. I promise you, I, well I, mean, I can't be promising nothing to nobody. This is a personal love affair with me. I love this seam ripper. I buy, when I go to that cool store, I buy like five each time. They're two and a half, uh, two forty-five two dollars and forty five cents or forty nine two dollars and fifty cents really not including tax I go and buy ten of them 
because I love them that much. Um, so also I found that I don't have to go to that quilt store anymore because um, the, the company that sells these is called Tooltron and I believe you could buy them. It's Tool and then Tron, T-R-O-N. Um, you can literally buy these for $1.60 now and this is what they look like now. I love these, seriously. Um, they're called mini seam rippers. I have them all over my house. I have literally ripped out huge quilts. It's a lot faster. It's uh, just be careful you don't cut yourself because you can really cut yourself with these. They're sharp. Um, they cut thread like butter. My favorite thing. Um, you go to Tooltron, T R O N, Tool, T R O N, and you'll find these for like a dollar sixty. I think they're pretty cheap. Um, I go to a quilt store, but now I'm going to go to Tooltron, and I buy them from my quilt store. They're $2.49, and I really just love these. Um, I give these away as gifts, and let me tell you this. I give them away as gifts, and the people who get these are like, really? You're giving me this? Okay, okay. And then <laughs> I go back like a week later after they use this, and they're like, oh, my God. This is like the best thing ever. Where do you get those? Where can I get some more? And I'm like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah. You'll love these. I, they're my favorite. But I've given them boys gifts and they look at me like, really? And this is, I think, one of the best gifts ever. Um, one of the biggest treasures I found. So I'm sharing it with you. Tooltron is a company where you could get these. So my favorite. So some of my favorite rulers that I got in 2015 were these circle template rulers that I got from Lisa Kelly. I love them. I just wish now that I got to experience the handle. I wish that they had some handles. Um, I had some issues with my hand movement when I'm working on them. But you know what? They're, they're awesome. I really do like them. I like the way they create a dimension on the the fluttering heart feather banner that I was doing. I think these are really great and I'm going to probably use them a lot. Well, another roller that I got from Lisa Kelly is I got this uh, Quilter's Groove Ruler. Uh, I think I like it. I'm not sure yet. To be honest, I did. What I found is when I went to the bottom here that it shifted on me and so my thread shifted when I was quilting. I don't know if you could see. It has some flexibility there. Um, I just, I'm not sure I like it yet. I'm, I'm sure I like it, but I'm not sure. Does that make sense? I think I need to play with it a lot more to really say, you know what, I want to buy like 10 more. Um, I know like with these, Lisa Kelly Circle Templates, I'm going to get, I got even, I'm going to get the odd. I know for sure I'm going to save up my money for her and I'm going to get my odd set because I like the circle templates that much. I like the variety it brings and the kind of dimension it could bring to my quilting. So I'm excited about that. I think Quilters Apothecary, I may try to see other companies and maybe even buy more rulers with this kind of 40 degree handle on them. Um, I really do like the way when you're quilting and moving your machine, how your fingers and your hands are out of the way. So I'm sold on these. I can say yes to these there I'm excited um, with her with her quick curve rulers I think I just need to learn more I need to really sit down and play with it more to really be sold on um, um, in this kind of shape of design I think I just need to play with it more to be honest but they're great rulers all her stuff is really great so another thing that I love is I've talked to you about fawns and porters I think I called them ponds and porters I don't know last time um, you can never go wrong with one of these. I went to a friend to help her, and she has a kind where you have to sit there and roll it up, and I'm like, Ooh. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just think I'm impatient. But I just love this. You can roll it out, and it's, uh, roll it out. It rolls out to 120, and you, you just saw it roll all back up. I love it. I use it to measure my back fabric, my top fabric for my clients. I use it to um, cut my batting. I mean, it's so easy. I carry one in my purse because I have some clients that I go to their house and pick up their quilts. It's so small and it doesn't unravel on me in my purse and I don't have to wind it. I think they're, 
I honestly paid seven dollars, but I think I paid seven dollars with the coupon. Uh, Fonts and Porters. It's 120 inches long. So this is, I believe, really for long arm quilters. I love this. I know I talked about it, my favorite things last time, but I've never been pissed off that I bought this. As a matter of fact, I've always been like, oh my god, I love this thing. Where is it? Where is it? So I buy them, so I have them everywhere. And usually when I buy more than one, it's because I'm really in love with it. And I buy a lot of it because I'm afraid to get rid of it. And so here, um, my favorite purchase, Fawns and Porters. Another thing that I really do love that I've purchased, and I know some of you... Um, may or not be sold or may not tried if you're a long arm quilter and you're having tension issues. Um, I recommend these bobbins. They're called M bobbins. You can get them at the lady who sells red snappers, but I got mine on eBay. I got a hundred for twenty dollars, and they have the the slit. Um, they're aluminum. They're really lightweight. What I love about them, it's I've, it's really made my tension awesome. What I found is these are my for Gamel. Gamel provides these for my machine. I think that the metal creates the drag inside these perforations, and um, it's hard to get my tension just right. And I, when I tried these just to try them, I really have never gone back. I bought a set of a hundred. I love them. Another thing that I love about them, I take out my check spring. Um, you don't have to, but I have taken out my check spring, and I use uh, Magic Genie bobbin, Magic Bobbin washers. These, and it looks like this. <clears throat> um, I take out my check spring, put this washer, put oil behind it, lay the lay it into the bobbin, and then I have this threaded, and then I change, check my tension on my Tova. I love these. I promise you, but I can't promise because each machine is different your machine may like certain things um, I've just found for myself I've given these away as gifts to long armors who complain to me about their tension and then um, when they get to using them right <clears throat> they call me like where did you get those where did you get these can you tell me where can you show me on eBay and also um, they really have fallen in love with them um, and that's with Gamble users. I know uh, IntelliQuilters use these. So if you want to use um, IntelliQuilters and bobbins, it's the same thing. I just got mine at eBay. I paid uh, $20 for 100 I think now the person who's selling these, they're selling them for 100 for $40. $40. But because I bought them like years ago. So that's um, uh, my favorite I'm sharing my favorite that I still to this day I'm still using and I guess that's what I'm sharing today another thing I love these I got these from she's a lady who created red snappers this is to hold your pack fabric um, I've been using them re recently and I really do love them the only complaint I have is you have to have at least two layers of fabric for it to hold real taut or it pops off um, it snaps open. You can um, tuck your fabric here and then tuck your batting. I noticed that's where you get the best tension or I found. If you put one layer of uh, fabric, I notice it ends up popping off on me and sometimes that's frustrating. So I go back to my old faithful clamps. So I like them. I just, if I have enough to do two layers of fabric, they work great. Um, I've had these for about two, three years and they've They've endured the test of time. I've done a lot of quilts with them. Another thing of my favorites, um, and this is not a long arm quilting. This is um, uh, this is an ironing board. I have a friend of mine. Her name is Joy, and her company is uh, Joy Joyful Soul Fabrics. But I think she closed her website down, so you can find her on Facebook, Joyful Soul Fabrics. She makes all my ironing tables that you've been seeing on YouTube are her tables. I've been using this ironing uh, little table that she made me for probably two years. It hasn't warped on me. Um, the only thing is, is my sheet has gotten dirty. I could, you could take it off. It's, it's removable. You can take it off like you see me removing it. And you can wash it. Um, she has several colors and it comes with a bag. And she calls these, I believe, they're called little monsters. <coughs> and it comes with a bag. 
what I like about this, it's I've been doing a lot of projects on YouTube. You've seen this table. I have two of them. You've seen these tables everywhere on my YouTube channel, especially if I'm doing quilt blocks. And I've never had an issue with it warping, with it flexing. It's kind of hard so it doesn't shift your fabric as much. Um, I did pay, I think it was $50 for one of these. I kind of didn't like, oh, it's $50. But the truth is, it's really worth the purchase. I love her stuff. And then when I'm doing my elderly quilt group, I have a bag to hold everything in. And I put my cutting mats in it. I put my cutting mats in it. I put my scissors in it, my rotary cutter. And it's all in one little easy bag. Like that. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, tools that I use every single time I'm sewing or piecing. And um, her name is Joyful Soul Fabrics. And I know she's on Facebook and she has some beautiful ones that she's made in green or aqua or rainbow colors. Some of them are just lovely to look at. Um, I think I've even asked her to make me some more, but she's been so busy. Um, so if you like an ironing table, look her up. She's awesome. She also sells fabric, I believe. So just check her out. Okay, so last but not least, I've been doing a lot of hand applique. Um, I've gotten into hand applique and into some crocheting. And so I wanted just to share with you, um, I'm learning a new technique. Usually when I do hand applique, I do rollover hand applique. And um, a friend of mine told me that you can do where you iron it and you roll it over through your iron. And so I went ahead and got myself one of these little irons. I don't know if you see this. Um, one of these little irons uh, to do my hand applique. I really do like it. Um, it sits kind of weird though. It kind of tips over and totters a lot. But I like it for what I'm using it for. And um, so I like it. But then I went and I got this one. This is called Heat Sealing Iron. So um, I haven't used it yet, but I got it for my hand applique. So after I um, use it, I'm going to go ahead and tell you how if I really like it or not. But I really do like this one, and I have used this one quite a bit. I do like this one a lot. I just, someone told me that these are hotter. So I went ahead and got hotter. It's a case of crochet shooks. I love this. I got into crochet for a period of time, and I crocheted. Um, myself an infinity scarf and then I didn't do anything with it anymore and I put this in the drawer and put it away I think I got this for I think $10 at Walmart um, and just recently since it's gotten cold over here in Texas I started crocheting again and I made myself this beautiful I made myself this beautiful cowl for the winter um, I made several of them for gifts because they only take maybe two or three hours to make they're just so easy to make and I think I used two skeins of yarn to make this. Um, I made this beautiful scarf, oh my god, and I gave it away. So um, there's just, you know, you're sitting there instead of eating and make eating chips while you're sitting watching TV, you could be making a beautiful scarf. Hope you like this tutorial and I'll see you next time. See you later guys, okay? Come on, turn off.